This video is called Making Your Own Openings, and it's the 10th video in Chapter 4 of Google SketchUp for Dummies. In this video, we're going to delete him, as always, and then I'm going to show you how to create openings like doors and windows in double-faced walls. So, what we just did uh, in the previous video, actually, was use components to create openings in walls that consist of one face. So this is a good example of a one-faced wall, just like that. But what happens if, I'm just going to undo a few steps there, what happens if we've got a box like that, I'm going to go up here and get my uh, offset tool, there we go, we offset an edge away from the other edge, so notice how there's edges all the way around, and then I'm going to get the push-pull tool, I could click on push-pull, but instead I'm going to hit P to get the push-pull tool, and then I'm just going to extrude this up, just like that. So what I've got now is I've got a thick wall, meaning it's not really thick, it's actually a wall that's made out of two faces. If I delete this top thing up, you'll see what I'm talking about. I've got a face here and a face there, but basically this wall consists of two faces, which means that I can't use the components that come with SketchUp to automatically cut through there, because those components are designed to only cut through one face. Okay, so if I want to create an opening, uh, first thing I'm going to do is actually figure out how big this thing is that I just made. So let's measure up here. It says that that's 17 feet 8 inches. Um, I'd rather be working with a 10 foot high wall, so I'm just going to type in 10 feet and hit enter. It's going to say, do you want to resize the model? Yes. And so it's rescaled the whole model for me. And if you're wondering how I did that, go back and check out chapter 2. There's a sidebar about resizing everything with the uh, tape measure tool that'll answer all your questions. Okay, but now if I measure that again, we're looking at 10 feet and that's perfect. Still with this tape measure tool, I'm going to say I want to make an opening that is, mm, I don't know, 6 feet in this direction. So I drew a guide that's exactly six feet over, and maybe I want that opening to be three feet wide, just like a standard door, so I'm going to type in three feet, or I could type in 36, oops, not 336, 36. SketchUp understands uh, inches by default, so if I type in 36 and enter, it's going to make something 36 inches wide. If I want to do something that's three feet wide, what I would do is type in, well, let's do five feet. I'm going to type in five apostrophe to tell it to do feet instead and hit enter and there I've got something that's that's five feet but I want to do 36 inches instead or three feet so I'm just going to type in 36 and enter and SketchUp corrects itself by moving that guide okay let's draw a guide that's exactly six foot eight from the floor so I'm going to type in six foot eight and hit enter and so what I've got now is a little opening that's exactly six feet from the end of the building it's exactly six foot eight high and it's exactly three feet wide. And what I'm going to do now is just come and grab this rectangle and let's just kind of draw a rectangle using the guides. So I clicked here where the intersection of the guides was. Now I'm going to click down here where the intersection of the guide and the edge is. And I'm going to go up and get the push pull tool. And I'm just going to push that until I see that little you see how it's kind of blinking purple and white, and I've got that on face cursor? That means that I'm pushing one face into the other face, and when I click, I'll have an opening that's very precise. So what I've done is I've just cut an opening in that wall, and that's basically how you do it. Let's talk about some reasons that that might not work. So I'm just going to undo a few steps, just like this. Now, let's say that my walls weren't exactly parallel. So what I did is I just used the Move tool to move this edge, which means that these two surfaces, the ones I'm clicking on, this one and this one, are no longer coplanar. They're not planar to each other. I, I did that by basically moving this edge over a little bit, just a few inches, and you can kind of see it if I kind of view the, the, the thing like that. It's kind of hard to tell, but take my word for it. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is do what I did before and just kinda draw a rectangle on this wall and then push pull that through and as I push pull you'll notice that nothing's happening I just kinda get this offset limited to error message and when I click there notice I've got some edges on the other side but it's not quite working and the reason it didn't work is because this wall isn't coplanar to this wall meaning this face isn't coplanar to this face which means one face when I push it through can't cut through the other I hope that's clear.
Okay, let's talk about another reason that that might happen. I just undid something so that those this kind of goes back to being uh, coplanar. Look what happens if I have a line across the back of this surface right here. So what I've done is I've just drawn a little shape here, but what that's done is it's created an edge on the back side of where exactly where I want to push this wall through. So what I'm going to do now is try it. Watch, I'm going to push pull, and when I do that, look at that, the face didn't disappear because there's that edge there. It didn't know what to do. It didn't know how to take away those pieces because what I was really doing was cutting through this edge on the other side and what you've got then is a big mess. And and if that happens to you, it's okay. All you have to do is start using your line tool to just start retracing some edges. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of really slowly retracing some edges and as I do that I'm gonna start experimenting. Let's hit uh, space to get the select tool. I'm gonna select this and We'll delete that. Mm, looks like it's kind of still a mess. So as I keep kind of tracing here, eventually those lines will become thin. Notice how they were thick before? I'm going to make that thin. Let's make this one thin too, just like that. And then I can go ahead and take the Select tool and select away the stuff I want to delete. Let's get the Eraser tool by hitting E and erase away that edge. And so now it kind of worked. But you can see that it was kind of a huge pain, right? Uh, before, without that line being there, we were able to just push it away. But with the line there, it, it created some problems. So probably the easiest way to deal with that would have been to try and delete that line before I even did that push-pull operation. And if I'd done that, I wouldn't have ended up with any issues at all. But you saw how I dealt with it. I just used the line tool to trace some edges and the delete key and the select tool to kind of make things go the way I wanted them to go.